Hello everyone, uh, my name is Andrea Aime, not Nuno Oliveira. <laughs> Nuno was supposed to be, it's just for the recording. Uh, Nuno was supposed to be here to deliver this presentation but couldn't come and then I, I got the, to, to deliver the, the talk on his behalf. Some things I know very well, other not so much, so I'll, I'll try to be as thorough as possible. Uh, but yeah, I'm just a messenger. So I work for Geosolutions, uh, um, a company based in Italy and in the United States. We are um, providing support and services around a number of open source projects, including GeoServer, of which we are core developer. And uh, we provide, uh, as I said, enterprise support, deployment, uh, uh, customization, training, and so on. As a company, we believe in open source, in open services, and that's why we participate to this conference. So, first of all, quick security overview in GeoServer. The security subsystem in GeoServer is based on Spring Security, which is a well-established Java library um, that provides a number of security integrations, which makes uh, GeoServer security extensible and pluggable by design. It can be configured via the web administration interface or the REST API, or both, and allows us to secure data services and administration. In GeoServer, we have two different implementations for authentication and authorization. They are both supported by Vanilla GeoServer. As I said, they are pluggable. So what you find in Vanilla GeoServer is a subset of the whole set of possibilities. Uh, in, ter in terms of terminology, we have the usual uh, suspects, user, groups, roles, data, and services. Um, in terms of authentication, we have support for encry encryption and uh, we have an extension mechanism that offers um, a variety of authentication mechanisms. Think HTTP basic, HTTP digest, uh, certificates, auth, uh, central authentication service, uh, name your own or write your own if you want because we have extension points. The authorization is role based no matter what flavor of uh, uh, authorization subsystem you're going to choose and I'm going to get into detail about it in a, in a little bit. So user groups and roles, what's the relationship? Again it's the usual. Users can exist on their own or can, they can be part of a group. Roles can exist on their own but they can they are typically attached to either directly users or, or groups for a better control of this classification. And by default, they are all stored inside the GeoServer data directory if you pick the, I mean, the default user management which stores the information as XML. But you can choose other uh, data management uh, facilities like a relational database, like an LDAP server, and more. Again, we have an extension point for that. Extension points allows to integrate uh, with other providers like user group services and role services, which, as I said, could be by default databases, LDAP, XML, or pick your own, write your own. Uh, this is a little bit of the user interface to configure user groups and role and to create a new user group service, for example. So that's what you get out of the box. Um, XML, JDBC, LDAP, but as I said, you can write your own, you can uh, contribute more. Let's talk about authentication. Authentication can be complicated in uh, enterprise environments. Each one picks their own. So some environments go for the most basic HTTP basic authentication, please on top of HTTPS, otherwise it's uh, dangerously um, fragile. Um, but you can use other things like auth, like uh, uh, key clock, like uh, uh, certificates, or even just provide the username as an HTTP header because you provided a proxy, an authentication proxy, in front of your server which does the authentication whatever way you want and just ever then just trusts your header provide, provided by the proxy. It's complicated also because you might want to have different authentication mechanism depending on the endpoint that you're hitting. So for the user interface, we typically have a different set of endpoints compared to the OGC services. And for the REST API, you might want to have something else already. These are called authentication chains. We attach them to an endpoint and say this is the series of authentication filters that you have to try. 
and they can say something like, okay, let's try form authentication. Did someone send me a username and a password in a form? No, okay. Do I have a cookie? No, okay. Do I have a basic authentication? No, then the user is anonymous. Something like that, this is the chain. And the, the three methods that I just enumerated are called authentication providers. Um, so, sorry, they are called authentication filters. The filters extract whatever uh, authentication information is in the request and then they try to use it to actually perform authentication. So for example, if I have username and password, it's extracted by the filter, but then it has to be verified. And we can verify it against an LDAP server, against a, a, a relational database, against uh, actual password or uh, salted hashes, for example. So different mechanisms to do this. And all of this is configurable to uh, match the particular use case of your organization. So this is one example of setting up the authentication uh, chain. So we have a chain for the web interface, but we have a chain for the REST interface, and another for the uh, GWeb cache configuration REST API, and a the default one which typically handles OGC requests. Um, filter chain, uh, as I said, a configuration of the set of steps that you will try to, to use in order to authenticate. This is one example of trying the HTTP header that the proxy might have provided, or use HTTP uh, um, basic, or if nothing else works, then assume that the user is anonymous. And then it's gonna be the authorization that will decide what to do if the user is anonymous. Deny access, allow access to a limited resource set, or whatever. So these are possible authentication filters, uh, and you can configure more, see, add new. They are also pluggable. So here we have the usual suspects which are built into GeoServer, but you can have more. This remember me thing is a cookie that is set browser uh, side to remember who you were to avoid having to re-authenticate over and over and over. Um, Authentication providers, again, by default, uh, the default one is XML-based, stored username and salted passwords in an XML file, but I could have JDBC, but I could have LDAP or roll your own. So, this is more or less an idea about authentication. So, at this point, the request has come in, we have run the, uh, the filters for that particular uh, endpoint, we have figured out who you are, uh, then we have to decide what you can do based on who you are, based on the roles that are attached either directly to your user or to the group that you are part of. Authentication, sorry, authorization. There are, again, multiple mechanisms here because there is an extension point called the Resource Access Manager. There is a default implementation that you find in Vanilla G Server. There is a plugin that's called Geofence that does more sophisticated rules, or you can write your own. A typical enterprise integration is writing a custom uh, authorization mechanism for that particular customer, for their, their particular needs. So, um, built in, we can do uh, um, authorization on services and operation, on workspace administration, and on data as layers. So we don't authorize the content of the layer, we just authorize the layer. The built-in authorization mechanism is simple. You can either access a layer or you cannot. You can either write on a layer or you cannot. Those are the two things that you can say. So this is uh, security um, authorization where you say, oh, okay, you need to have the read role in order to access the WFS service, but you have to be an administrator to do WFS transaction. This is the default configuration to make sure that, you know, when you install a vanilla Geo server, nobody can go and alter your data just because you forgot to lock it down. It's locked down by default. Um, and again, we pick the service, eventually the method, and say, okay, you need to have these roles in order to do this action. For data, we have uh, uh, a similar situation. Let's see if I have a nice screenshot, yeah? So we say, for the reports, workspace, and any layer inside of it, you have to be either an administrator or have the reports read role in order to access that workspace. 
If you don't, then you will not be able to access it. Uh, but what happens when you cannot access it? Well, we have three different policies. Two are simple to understand. One is weird, but it, it's what paid for the initial implementation of the <laughs> authorization subsystem. So hide is the default policy. It's uh, if, you can, uh, if you are not authorized, you don't see it. It's high security policy. If you are not supposed to access it, it does not exist. Juicero will tell you, I don't know what this workspace or this layer is. They are there, it will pretend it's not there. Challenge uh, is instead the opposite. It will not pretend it's not there. It, it's going to tell you, hey, you don't have rights to access this. Please authenticate yourself or you know, elevate your authentication with another user or something like that. Do something about it. First approach, useful when you are dealing with high security system. Second approach, useful when you are selling something. Oh, you did not, uh, you know, you did not pay for the service, please. Give me some money. Mixed is the one that is weird, um, in which the, the layers are actually hidden by default, so you will not see them in the preview, in the capabilities. Uh, but if you actually try to access them, because maybe somebody provided you a direct link to them, then your server will say, hey, yeah, please authenticate yourself. It's there, but I need to know who you are. OK, then we have administration security rules. Um, by default, GeoServer is managed by a single big bad administrator that, can, uh, the administrator that can do anything. But you can also authorize smaller administrators that can administer only a single workspace. So it's a way to uh, delegate part of the administration to other people that can add extra stores and layers and styles in one particular workspace without touching or maybe even seeing the other workspaces. And so we have uh, uh, an access mode called admin that can be activated on workspaces. If this is not enough, and in many cases it is not enough, we, uh, you can uh, install Geofence. Uh, Geofence is an advanced authorization engine for GeoServer that replaces the default built-in engine and uh, um, can store rules either on H2, which is the default database, or PostgreSQL, or even something else, some other relational database, I mean. And um, it has this ability to combine several aspects into a single rule. So you can write a rule saying, yes, if the service is this, and the uh, user is that, and the request is uh, uh, this, so you, you can mix and match both data and services in the same rule, then you say, OK, uh, this user has access, or it doesn't have access, or it has access with limitations. And the limitations are the actual interesting bit, in my opinion, of Geofence. Um, in particular, uh, well, the list of rules is uh, reminiscent of IP tables if you ever configured a firewall with it. Uh, so you have uh, rules that are evaluated in order until one matches. Uh, we have allow rules, which um, well enable access to a particular layer, but uh, um, with uh, potential restrictions. Um, in particular, you can, you can uh, control which styles a particular user can see. So maybe you have certain styles that uh, you know, expose a little too much information, and you want only certain users to, to be able to see them. But you can also apply SQL read and write filters so that you can um, control what data in that layer a particular user category sees, which is a big departure from enable and disabling just access to the whole layer. Uh, you can also write a spatial area filter by providing a polygon and say, yeah, okay, this user can see area in this, sorry, can see data in this area and not the rest, or can write data in this area and not the rest. Think about a collection on the field. You have 10 people going around. Each one has their own area of, of collection. You can enable each one to collect only in their area and don't, don't do WFST anywhere, anywhere else. You can also control which attributes each user can see or write to. Um, 
Finally, there are limit rules which allow uh, to specify, maybe at the workspace level, general limitations about the data. So instead of authorizing each and every single layer and say all these layers have a geographic restriction, you say anything in this workspace has been limited to this area. So it, it's a way to you know, have a bit more compact um, uh, results. And, uh, uh, sorry, compact configuration. And uh, so you provide uh, an area by WKT, and you can also control what kind of filtering you get. Let's see an example. United States and that polygon. I have two op options, filter and clip. If I say clip, my data will be actually clipped to the polygon. So it's not filtering. I'm actually modifying the geometries that I keep giving back to the user so that he sees nothing else but what inside the clip or intersect, in which case I will see anything that overlaps with my uh, restricted area. Uh, again, we can control administration rules uh, so that uh, you can use geofence to limit administration access just like with the built-in configuration. You can roll your own authentication mechanism. If you are not satisfied with what geofence and the built-in mechanisms do, you can write your own. The built-in and geofence are just two possible implementations of the default of the resource access manager interface. And with that implementation, you can do just about anything that geofence does. Select attributes, make them read-only, clip, filter, and whatnot. But with your own logic, rather than the geofence one. And uh, yeah, this is a classic uh, ad adaptation of GeoServer to an enterprise environment that does demanding uh, requirements. So write two plugins which are yours. Community modules, authentication. We have one interesting module which is the key authentication module which is used by Geofence to provide temporary key access keys for clients that cannot play uh, the game of the high-end authentication mechanism like OpenID Connect. So I give you a key that is in the URL which is dangerous but I make it uh, valid for five minutes for example with eventual uh, renewal. Uh, we have support for OAuth 2 with uh, the OpenID uh, plugin and uh, you configure all the connections to the OpenID server and we have the same for KeyClock. Uh, again with uh, uh, all the necessary configuration. For KeyClock and OpenID you can go beyond authentication and also extract roles out of uh, uh, the tokens that the servers are returning. So they play two games in this case. They are an authentication mechanism, but they are also a role provider. And this is the end. <laughs>